<laughs> Maybe you've heard of white noise or pink noise, brown noise or green noise. What's the difference between these noises? And why can they help you fall asleep? Let's get into it. White noise is called white noise because of a comparison to light. If you take all of the visible wavelengths of light and combine them together, you end up with white light. In the same way, if you take all of the frequencies of audio that you can hear and play them at the same time, at the same volume, you get white noise. So the color noises are just where we take a certain portion of that frequency spectrum and play that back to produce either a lower pitched or a higher pitched sound. The specific sound is determined by the length of the wave. A longer wavelength is going to produce a lower sound, and a shorter wavelength is going to produce a higher pitch sound. So this is white noise. And right now you're hearing all frequencies being played at a level volume. So the entire audible spectrum is just at a level volume. Now this is pink noise. And for pink noise, this was basically weighted to accommodate for human hearing. So human hearing tends to favor the higher frequencies. And so those can come through a lot more with white noise. Pink noise kind of drops those frequencies off a little bit so that you're hearing something that's weighted a little bit more to the lower end of the spectrum, which is why it's called pink, because you're reducing some of the, what would be the blue side, those shorter wavelengths. And if you were doing that to light, you'd end up with a sort of pinkish hue. So this is red noise. And with red noise, we're just dropping it even further. So we're instead of just kind of tapering it off, we're taking that spectrum and we're actually just highlighting the lowest end of the frequency range. So next, let's listen to brown noise. So brown noise is a deep, rich sound, but it still is going to bring you some of that kind of staticky, higher frequency. It's still just kind of favoring the lower end of the spectrum. With our red noise, what we did is really isolated that portion of the spectrum so that you just have that pure, deep rumble, the kind of thing that you're getting from like backseat of a car, airplane cabin, womb sounds, just like a very sort of hollow cocoon of sound. We're going to do green noise now. Let's listen. This is a controversial one, OK? So bear with me. Green noise is supposedly tuned to the average frequency of the entire Earth. Um, which I am no scientist, but I don't think that that's based on anything. Um, but it might be. I don't know. I'm just an audio producer. We basically just took our green noise and placed it in the green segment of the frequency spectrum. I think it's a nice, rich, warm sound to listen to. Let's listen to blue noise. To me, these higher pitched sounds kind of get into a more specific place in your brain. Where blue noise fits in for me is like the shower sound. The, the general public definitely prefers a lower frequency range, but we wanted to include everything, so we've got blue here if showers is your thing. All right, let's listen to violet. Violet to me is like this very targeted, specific sound. The reference that we came up with is letting air out of a tire, so just, you know, that kind of soft, gentle, natural hiss. So in summary, just think about the rainbow. Roy Gabiv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And you've got the sound frequency spectrum as well, where we're just identifying low sounds being on the red end, high-pitched sounds being on the blue end. Want to try out a new color tonight? Try it in the Hatch app.